Hello everyone, and welcome to Wanderer Wednesdays, and more specifically, Wanderer Wednesdays in Fallout 76. And for the first episode in Fallout 76, I've decided to show off the location, which I was most interested in when I first saw, like, the maps in-game. Just kind of floating about. Oh, there's some more rats over there. Which is Vault Tech University, just here. Yeah, I've already poked around this place once before, but I didn't get a proper go at it, as I ended up teaming up with someone afterwards, so I went away and did that. But now, I figured I'd take a proper look, because, yeah. This place is cool. Ooh. Post Tenebras Lux. Now, this is when you need John from Many a True Nerd here. He's, um... Actually, you know what? I'm going to be really, really cheeky. <laughs> and just for the sake of it, let's see if we can add him. There we go. Sent John from Many a True Nerd a friend request. Because there's been enough people in the past who's are, who have asked for a collaboration. You never know, in this game, there's a slim chance of it happening. Yeah, so Vault Tech University, which looks really cool. I should say, I've never been to an American university. I've only seen them in movies. And, um, I've not been to, like, a proper big English university in many, many years. So I'm not sure how reliable this is, but this looks like... Fancy schooling, yeah, multiple buildings. Um, let's start off with the big main one, because that's the attraction. And, jeez, this this just looks quite pretty. Like, I'm surprised at how well the game looks. There does seem to be a problem with, you can see their depth of field. It seems a bit off on that, but... The stuff overall does look pretty just nice, which I approve of. And we step inside. I quite like that the interiors are dark in places. Ah! Okay, so this place is infected with mole rats. That's good to know, and I can hear a ghoul somewhere too. Oh, I could also hear someone opening a door. I don't know if that's another player or a ghoul. Let's check on the map. Okay, no other players apparently around me, unless they're crouching like I am. Because that does make you invisible on the map. But yeah, sounds like we got plenty of ghouls up here, as well as mole rats. So let's deal with them. And oh, look at this. This I, I took a picture of before. I had just enough time to take a picture of this before I got pulled away to go multiplayering. Yeah, that right there is just kind of cool. It's a little actual vault thing, and oh, it's nice. And yes, quest objective, I know you want me to go outside, but we're not doing that right now. We have more interesting stuff to do. So let's have a little wander about, see what I can find. Because, oh, here's an actual vault inside of a university. Yeah, like... There's power reactors, oh, and a bunch of ghouls, who, have they died down here, or have they, oh dear, oh dear, have they turned up from outside, and then shown up? I do not know. Yeah, there's definitely more of them around, so let's clear those out, then take a bit of a look, and see what's going on. So a lot of this stuff should be pretty familiar to people who played Fallout 4, and more specifically the, uh... It wasn't vault -Tec. It well, it wasn't called vault -Tec, but yeah, there was a vault -Tec DLC. And, ooh, a door. Simulation vault entrance. So we have not a real vault, but a simulation one inside of a university. Let's see, can we just open this up? Uh, ooh, previous simulation status. Failure, total loss of life. Well, we already know everyone's dead. Current status, vault has been cleaned by automated systems and is ready for the next simulation. Upcoming simulation, no plans available, system awaiting setup instructions. So, let's open the door. And head inside. Because, yep, the door has opened up. And let's walk through, and... Okay, bunch of destroyed lockers. Just take all the junk. Oh, I'm over-encumbered, that's not too good. But it's fine, and then, yep, vault stairway. And... Ooh, quite a nice fancy vault down here. We've got, yeah, just... You always get kind of a standard, just, oh, we're just going to throw the junk of a vault in the first bit. And then it opens up into... We've got a classroom on the left-hand side, and a med bay on the right. Let's go to... Oh, there's, a, there's a working Mr. Handy down there. There's working Mr. Handys all around. I think this area might be safe, so I'm going to put my gun away. Yeah, basic classroom in here, lots of desks, like you'd expect in many vaults, like Fallout 3, it was a big point that there's, like, classrooms and they get taught and boards up there to get it all done. Fairly standard from what you'd expect. Then, medical area. I think 
Did most sports have a medical area as well? A lot of them certainly did, but I don't know if it was literally every one. Probably not knowing Voltec. And did the Mr. Handys have anything to say? Just say hello, apparently. And you've only got one arm. Actually, it looks like they've all only got one arm. I wonder if there's a reason behind that, or if it's just like, oh yeah, these just have one arm. Ooh, and this bit looks kind of cool. Yeah, walk in here and... Inaccessible door. Okay. Yeah, like in Fallout 4, collecting junk is a big thing, so you will see me occasionally just looking at everything. Uh, okay, shower, bathroom thing here. This is all looking fairly standard and typical of what you'd expect from a vault. So the simulation is quite accurate so far. Right, and oh, oh, open the door. And we got a feral ghoul here. Shoot that in the head quick. Okay. So they say they've cleared it out, but it's not entirely done. Ah, this looks like... From the Overlook, I'd have said Overseer's office, but maybe not exactly. Let's see if a terminal sheds any light on anything. Nope, that's just another entrance, okay. So yeah, this is just another entrance into the vault, or simulation vault even, that we can get into. And then, what's up here? Standard entranceway, and... Let's kill a couple of ghouls quick. And then we can check out what's going on. And ghouls often have the requisition things. If you're looking for supply drops... Yeah, there were vault dwellers in here. VT, vault tech, so I'm guessing these are university students. That just got, yeah, stuck in here after the bombs went off. I'm sure we will learn more about them very soon. Ooh. Just opened up this door and a whole bunch of vault tech people, or students, obviously trying to get in here. And more of them trying to get in the other door. Extinguisher in hand, obviously trying to break through it. This looks... This... This here, yeah, I was on the other side before. This is the Overseer's office. So let's see what the Overseer of this vault simulation was up to. Overseer's log, 15th of October 2077. T minus one day until my test run starts. I did the final walkthrough with my advisors before getting locked in. The students will be here tomorrow to test my hypothesis that using a calorically dense food paste of my own formulation is superior to standard supplies, and that my flavouring system will create enough variety so that dwellers won't get bored. Overseer's Log, 16th of October 2077. My dwellers have arrived. After a brief orientation, I've given them time to adjust to one another, the parameters of the experiment, and their respective roles. I plan on giving an address later today. 17th of October. We are on full lockdown and everything is running smoothly. Unless I signal to my advisors, we're in this until the time lock's release four weeks from now. So far, the test is going well, and feedback has been positive on the food paste formulation. 19th of October. The dwellers are eating even less of the experimental formulation than I expected. They report full bellies and satisfactory metabolisms. 23rd of October. It felt like something happened on the outside today, almost like an earthquake, and we lost power in the vault temporarily. The dwellers were able to quickly restore power via the backup generators. I assume that this is part of a drill, and my people performed admirably. 26th of October. A heart attack. Sudden and out of nowhere. One of the maintenance staff died in the middle of his workday. I'm waiting on the coroner's report before I make any decisions. 27th of October. The coroner did a full autopsy. It looks like it wasn't a heart attack, but the arterial walls of the heart hardened and cracked. I've ordered a medical review of the control group and members of the test group. 28th of October. It's conclusive. My food paste formulation causes arterial plaque buildup. There were no signs of buildup in the control group, so I've ordered the dwellers to take stock of the remaining standard issue food to see if we have another week left in us. 29th of October. More bad news. My food paste was not as popular as I thought. Apparently a black market for standard rations cropped up and we have only two days for everyone in the vault. I want to try and figure a solution to this problem before I signal my advisors to end the test prematurely. This is my senior thesis experiment, and if I fail, I won't be able to operate as a full overseer. 31st of October. The dwellers are threatening to revolt if I don't call the experiment. They burn through the rations quicker than we thought, and now are getting scared. I'm going to signal my advisor and cancel the test. I can't take the chance that we're going to lose anyone else. 1st of November. No response from the outside. The dwellers think that I'm lying to them, 
and are threatening to storm my office. I'm not sure if I can hold off a full offensive for two full weeks. 2nd of November. They've breached the outer seal and are at the door to my office. I can hear the drill operating. It'll take them days to get through, but I can't take the chance. I don't know why my advisors aren't responding. People are dying here, and more are going to die, and there's nothing I can do about it. This will be my final entry before I barricade myself in my bedroom, in the hopes that I can outlast the time locks. God willing, this is just part of a test. Something tells me it's not. Okay, so there we had, yeah, an overseer who was seemingly pretty nice. Yeah, simulation in progress, just a control vault simulation. Overseer seemed like a good person, didn't actually want anyone to die. But yeah, these all stormed, obviously went through the door and tried to drill through here. Got through, but it looks like they didn't make it through here, even though it's completely open. And, ah. I'm guessing this is the Overseer, dead in the bed. Dishrag and, ooh, Dishrag and Rat Poison next to them. Oh, I just knocked you off, sorry about that, buddy. I wonder if they ended up taking their own life. Yeah, telephone where they called through, and, ooh, Vault Tech Coffee Cup. Let's take a look at that, because that's a somewhat unique little bit of junk there. Uh, Vultec Coffee Cup? Yep, Vultec University Coffee Cup. Look at that. Something to add to your settlements if you fancy doing so. Or camps, I should say. And what's in this other one? So there's two doors here. Ah! So some of them obviously tried to get into the overseas thing, but also tried to just break their way out and up to... Not even sure what this place is. Maybe this is where the advisors were. Yeah, the advisors up above monitoring everything. And then it leads to a door back into the proper university. And to some feral ghouls as well. Wait, you die, thank you. Okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah, some nice lore to go with this place. That is what we like to see. A lot of people I know were worried that there wouldn't be any interesting lore because it's a multiplayer game, but I've seen a lot of stuff I like so far. I do really like the just structural design of this. I wish I knew more about architecture so I could talk about it in some detail, but just how everything's laid out, it's both good level design, there's vertical verticality plays a much bigger part in this game than in any other Fallout I want to say. And ooh, Office of the Dean. Stuff's actually signed, and this, I'm guessing, is the actual Office of the Dean. And there's so many things like this where you can walk through walls, and sometimes you can get around, like, lockpicking checks, because there's just a wall with a hole in it right next to it. Stuff like that is little lovely bits and pieces that I do really enjoy. Oh, apparently there's a feral ghoul somewhere. Yep, Dean's office. Nothing too interesting in here. What's next door? Ooh. Oh, Dean Harland Elliott's workstation. We'll want to go into that, and a level 3 safe. Alright, so hacked into the terminal, and perfect. Can disengage the lock for the safe. I definitely advise hacking if you're looking to open stuff. So many safes are controlled by terminals. And student thesis evaluations. Liam Hornwright. My understanding is that Mr. Hornwright is attending school primarily to party, and spends the majority of his time in a haze of marijuana. Hence his absurd and hastily banged out proposal. However, his family connections make him a potential liability, so we will have to see how well he handled his future training. Drew Collingsworth Collingsworth's proposed experiment has evolved beyond my wildest expectations. His initial proposal mirrored other successful food replacement schemes, and even showed a little imagination for once. I pushed him towards a more interesting experiment that should test the general willpower of individuals and how they react to death caused by food supplies. I've tasted his pastes. They're suitably horrible, so we're going to mass-produce them and add an arterial placking agent that should cause rapid circulatory system decline. I expect a full-blown revolt within two weeks, and we should be able to end the experiment in the middle of week three. Okay, so even though the person trying to become an overseer was being, like, all innocent, and from the sounds of it actually made half-decent food replacement paste, although not particularly well-tasting, the Dean was like, oh, we're gonna proper vault tech this up, and just make it evil and have people die and see how everyone reacts. Ah, oh, good old vault tech. Shelby O'Rourke. O'Rourke has proven to be persistent enough to convince me to grant her a small amount of funding for a thesis project, to provide evidence of so-called cryptids. Should she prove the existence and have appropriate data, this would be a major breakthrough that vault tech can surely benefit from. 
If anything, it gets her out of here for a few months. Should she not return within her given time period, we'll need to find a team to locate wherever she holed up and retrieved any data for investigation. Okay, cryptids, this... is this aliens? Because vault Tech has aliens, or Fallout even has aliens. So yeah, I think we're dealing with aliens now. Let's... oh, there we go. We're also dealing with ghouls, but they're easy to take down with my lovely, lovely gun. Now, something else we have is the computer lab. Which is fairly standard. Yeah, ghoul that I actually came in and killed, I've already been in here. Yeah, just a very standard computer lab. Any other terminals working? Looks like they're all... Oh, not quite. Liam's terminal. That was the party guy, wasn't it? An experiment for determining the ability of canines to form a self-governing society. Basically, the experiment will involve a group of dogs trained to train other dogs to perform typically human-run tasks. I've begun training my miniature schnauzer, Riley, to operate vault doors, which I think is a promising start to the experiment. I'd be happy to bring her in any time to demonstrate. Advisor response. Mr. Matthews, this proposal lacks any kind of substantial value and makes me seriously question your devotion to the project of the preservation of the human race. Please see me and we can talk about a serious proposal, if you can manage to find my office. Okay, so yeah, we've got a drugged up kid who... Just was like, yeah, I'm gonna make my dog do stuff, that'll be fun. And, oh, Drew Collingsworth, wasn't... Yeah, Drew was the one who actually died in the vault that, whose corpse we found. Abstract. An experiment for determining the optimal density of calories in a foodstuff versus storage space. This experiment will test the tolerance of various individuals' ability to consume food of unvarying texture, but allow them to design flavours or use pre-created flavours. In this experiment, there will be a control group that uses a standard regimen of vault supplies and an experimental group that subsists on nothing but my proprietary food paste formula. See attached materials. Okay, so here's just, yeah, a bunch of different flavours they can make, and... Umai, pre-mixed flavourings, almond, banana, beet, brewer's yeast, chilli, chicken, cappuccino, fish, herring, honey, lemon, lime, liver, oatmeal, orange, peppermint, red meat, sour cream. Okay, so he, he was really trying to make this work, despite vault Tech University's Dean kind of screwing him over. Advisor response. Mr. Collingsworth, your proposal has come a long way, and the board has agreed to give you one month of vault time starting on October 15th of this year. We will accelerate your leadership classes and pull you from unrelated or less important classes. Congratulations. Dean Harland Elliott, President. Overseer Training Advisory Board. Oh, our vault tech so nice. That oh, that I kind of feel sorry for that kid. He just, you know, was trying to do good, make it so people can actually live in the vaults, have more food, so that starving to death is less of an option or less of a certainty. And vault tech was like, okay, but what if we make people hate it and just want to kill each other? And Professor M. Blake. I think we're all out of ghouls for the time being. Let's see what he was up to. Ooh, unable to connect to university intranet, only offline files and directories accessible. Course syllabus template. Syllabus for, oh, okay, it's just a basic outline of fill in the blanks, all of that. Notes to self. Oh, one sec, I actually hear a ghoul. This is the one disadvantage of law searching in a multiplayer game. You have to kind of be aware but at any point, you could just have enemies sneak up on you, so clear the area out before you start digging into the lore. Notes to self, Horse Creek Petroglyphs. Had a chance to go study the Horse Creek Petroglyphs in person. I've been meaning to do so ever since moving to West Virginia. They have always fascinated me. The idea that Europeans landed in North America and travelled that far inland during the 6th or 7th century is fascinating. Now, whether it was written in Old Irish Ogham, Basque or some other ancient language is up for debate. Personally, I prefer the Basque translation, as it paints a vivid picture of a great bison hunt. But regardless, it's exciting to study and theorise about any petroglyphs in our own backyard. Jacqueline brought more of her notes around the other day. Still not sure what to make of those runes. They don't match any of the native petroglyphs in the area, nor do they match any of the old European runes I would have expected. Still, I'm confident I will find a match somewhere. And if not, there may be enough to go on to piece together a rough idea of what they say, if anything. I'm beginning to think it may be nonsense, but I am intrigued. 
Ever since vault -Tec brought out the university, they've been shifting focus away from classic education and moving towards more specialised classes. I've seen several other professors get the boot, but thankfully, I seem to have been spared thus far. I should feel lucky they believe language is a skill worth preserving if the event society collapses, and we all need to move underground. Guidestone Translations Jacqueline has instructed me that she would feel safer if I move the translation key offline. The woman is paranoid, but I don't disagree that it's for good reason. It is because of this that she insists on keeping the original notes with her. She says it's for the best, just in case someone gets to one of us, so none of us have all the pieces. Even Agent Wilson's taking precautions. We could be onto something big here. Then again, I still maintain the runes are simply ancient petroglyphs left by the indigenous peoples of the region. Jacqueline believes they may be extraterrestrial in nature, but I'll stick with Occam on this one. The hypothesis with the fewest assumptions is often the correct one. Alrighty, some more talk of aliens there. Yeah, we've got a few alien references quite early on in the game. Let's see just what else I can find whilst wandering around this place, because yeah, there's there's a ton of lore here. We have all the lounge. Yeah, this isn't like a specific lore video, but I figure I'll cover it seeing as it's all here and it's all quite interesting. Like, I'm not one of the biggest lore guys, but I'm more interested in it in this game because it is a multiplayer. And it feels like, oh, it's not just blah de blah de blah we actually get to properly interact with this stuff. And it's so early on with the vaults as well that stuff isn't corrupted. It's... Oh, I'm quite excited. Alright, dropping down from the hole in that old professor's office, we have, first of all, the couple of ghouls there, and then Young Dweller Development Terminal, where we've got a child's bedroom here. Or a child's vault bedroom, anyway. Yeah, you know, just standard stuff here, some wooden blocks, giddy up buttercup, a couple of beds for two dwellers, and a few things for a classroom. Although that one is not too well spaced out. Let's see what we've got here. Class Syllabus, Preteen Vault Dwellers. Introduction. One of the duties of a Vault Overseer may involve becoming a surrogate parent or dispensing advice to actual parents of young dwellers. Through this series of courses, Vault Tech will instruct you on how to deal with one of the most difficult classifications of children, the preteen, 10 to 12 years of age. If you have any questions about the entries in this syllabus, please speak to a Vault Tech University representative. This course is designed to introduce the mechanics of preteen physiology. The focus will be primarily regarding maintenance and upkeep, including things that can go wrong in the preteen's body. Students will be instructed how to repair common issues and deal with physiological emergencies. Please note that this course includes laboratory dissection work, so the proper biohazard equipment will be issued after registration is completed. Learn how to cope with such issues as preteen angst, tantrums, outright defiance, whining, laziness and self-motivation. The course will also instruct the Vault Overseer on how to draw up behavioural contracts, and define consequences for preteens who breach outlined obligations. Many young Vault Dwellers will reach the puberty stage during their preteen years. This course will enable the Vault Overseer to understand the changes that are occurring in these budding youths, and become their mentor if necessary. Explanation of physical and psychosocial behavioural changes is covered in the course, as well as how to explain these changes to preteen dwellers in a way they'll understand. Also included will be how to properly administer and explain the Vault Tech Puberty Welcome Kit, which should be presented to all preteen dwellers once they've achieved this growth milestone. Although a preteen can range from only 10 to 13 years of age, they certainly qualify for a variety of jobs in the average vault. This course is specifically designed to explain the difficulties of various tasks, and which ones are optimal for the preteen dweller. The course also deals with occupational safety considerations when assigning preteens to tasks involving nuclear, biological, or chemical environments. Cool, so Vault Tech was just like, oh yes, human, children, they're like, what, wait, what's a human, children, things like? Oh, I've just stepped outside by accident. One second. Ooh, somewhere in the distance I can hear a Mr. Handy just beat up a ghoul. And, okay, some first aid things kicking about as well. Yeah, I think we've explored pretty much everything of note here. We have, yeah, back down to the entrance to the vault simulation. Trying to work out if there's anything I've really missed so far, but I think we have everything. I'm going to keep recording for a little while just in case, and I'll probably meet you outside for the outro if there's nothing else. If there is something else, though, well, I'll cut ahead to that now. Alright, so back outside vault tech, and oh, looks like mole rats have respawned. I actually came out of this one here. So it looks like the underground vault connects this to this to that. 
which is pretty cool. It means everything is nice and connected. And this is a really cool location. Like, I've been exploring it for 45 minutes now, and I had popped in once before very briefly. And oh, I'm joining an event as well. Cool. Yeah, this little thing here. Just. Oh! Hold up. Alright, left that event. Yeah, this place is just pretty damn awesome, to be honest. It's- Oh god! I put my gun away! Why'd I put my gun away? Why'd I put my gun away? Bad mole rat. This place is pretty damn cool. I'm very happy I came here, and more than happy that this is the first episode of Wonder on Wednesday. So, like, having that light it up as well. Oh, this is a pretty, pretty location. Let's get ourselves a nice selfie with it first. Just to kind of end things off. There we are. Look at that. Just a nice basic picture to remind us of the experience. Isn't that lovely? I want to thank you all very much for watching. If you've enjoyed, do hit the like button. Subscribe for more Fallout 76 content. I plan on doing this a fair bit with Wanderer Wednesdays, which happens every Wednesday. There'll be a lot of wandering around Fallout 76's West Virginia, exploring interesting locations, or just going on a bit of a trek for the fun of it. I'll also be doing plenty of guides, builds, general gameplay videos, a bit of everything really. I've got a lot of plans and not enough time, even with doing this non-stop. So, thank you all very much for watching. Once again, if you liked or enjoyed, hit the like button. That's all for now. Sarge out.